Good morning, folks. We've got a quiet day on the sun. It's a nice break from the ramp upward into the sunspot cycle. We have a lot of planetary news to hit today and a few other key items of interest, but we'll start at spaceweathernews.com and identify what will be the next bit of space weather, presuming those bright active regions stay quiet on the south. It would be the northern coronal hole. Now, the solar wind has been very quiet and calming since the previous stream. It's anemically low solar wind intensity right now, until the phi angle flip and impact of the next solar magnetic sector, or the coronal hole. Let's go out to the first in exoplanet research. The first radio waves they discovered coming from a planet 55 light years away tells them it definitively has a magnetic field. It is the first such confirmation on an exoplanet, and it was performed with the low far array in Europe. We're going to Enceladus next, moon of Saturn, and its subsurface ocean is officially declared habitable. Veteran observers aren't really surprised at the concept, but this is a big step for the mainstream. From a universe hazard perspective, by the way, if microbes are there, they are more protected than we are. Quick jump to Mars for the infant version of electric geology. Baby steps are all we can hope for in the realm of reworking the face of a planet with electrochemistry. Just wait until they discover the cosmic thunderbolt. Stopping back at Earth for a breather real quick. What's this? Sunlight seems to reduce SARS-CoV-2 like it does every other coronavirus known in existence, including the common cold. Why, thank you, Harvard. We're looking at supernova next, and the latest Gaia results have allowed for more specific distance calculations, but that's posing another problem entirely. The results now clash with the cold dark matter model, and speaking of such clashes, yep, that's Mueller and Pulowski leading a team coming to that finish line from the satellite galaxy angle as well. Pulowski is one of the interviewees in our Plasma Cosmology series and movie, and these satellite galaxies can only really be well studied at the Milky Way, nearby Andromeda and Centaurus A systems. So far, all three break the dark matter model. Now lastly, folks, I was asked over 200 times yesterday the same question, shattering my record for one day asking of an item. Since we knew that Pluto pretty much had its collapse at some point in the last three years, and we know now that Neptune is having its reversal phenomena as well. Can we use this to judge when the effects of the galactic current sheet will reach Earth or the Sun? No, not the way you're hoping for an answer. Earth goes through the Sun's current sheet for a few hours each week. Scaled up, that's a few centuries within the 12,000 year cycle. The sheet arrived at our solar system around 1859. It triggered the Carrington event from the Sun, which matches 100% the start of the magnetic excursion event on Earth. And the planets have all been showing major changes, not just the last year, but for a number of years, just not quite to the level of Pluto and Neptune yet. We don't know how long it'll be before Saturn, Jupiter, Earth, Venus, or the Sun react in full. And it's not like it's a nice line you can track through space either. We are within the sheet. We've been in it, and it's progressing onward slowly. No joke, every question asked yesterday about the cosmic disaster, including that one, can be answered by watching that cosmic disaster playlist and movie. Watch that playlist at our channel page or at the link in the description box below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. Tomorrow we'll close down otf.cells.com for the holiday, last chance for our books, hats, shirts, etc. Wind maps are struggling again, so I'll leave you here. And suspiciousobservers.org website members watch Deeper Look 98 before watching 99. Trust me. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.